Hello, and welcome to the Art of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane, and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop, and trust your intuition through interviews with other guests and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to the Voice of Intuition podcast. I will fix that soon. Um, My name is Susan Jane and I'm your host for the podcast. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for joining in, um, for tuning in and listening to this segment. We have got a very special guest today. Now, Desiree has, we've connected with Desiree earlier and sort of the wheels fell off. Everything went a bit crazy. And so we've been emailing backwards and forwards. And her life has just been completely turned upside down in the last three or four months. And but we're not going to be talking about all of that. We're actually going to be talking about lives between lives, that that period between lives. And that's what our, our main uh talk is about but I've got to let you understand what poor Desiree has gone through in the last couple of months and how it doesn't matter how spiritual spiritual we are it doesn't matter what we're doing things will make us wobble and things will cause and create different aspects to make us look at our lives differently and this is what's happened with Desiree just recently but that's enough of me talking um welcome on board Desiree how are you I'm better than I used to be a couple months ago. And hello, Susan. I'm glad to finally be here with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is lovely. Look, I, I just want to go through because you have had a, a real traumatic experience recently. And then we'll get into our talk. But yeah, a little bit about your background and a little bit about what you've been going through because it's all relevant to where our talk is where we're going. Yeah. Um, so, like, just going back a little bit to June. In the beginning of June, I think it was June 1st, I had Susan on as my guest um, on my you know, uh, YouTube show and podcast. And I remember commenting that uh, we would be opening and closing the month together because I was scheduled to be on um, her show on the uh, June 30th, I think it was. But June 30th found me still in the hospital um, as part of a month's stay with um, two brain surgeries. <laughs> You know, the second one where they actually cut it open and went in to fix things. The first one uh, left an accident that left me blind in one eye um, uh, and unexpected. It was a brain hemorrhage that happened. Uh, My dad died while I was in the hospital. But I do have something interesting to share with you, Susan, about part of that experience um, that will kind of tie maybe to this past life and life between lives conversation when we get into that um, an event happened in the hospital. Nonetheless, I, I was been through the ringer, and um, I, it's you know I'm really grateful to be doing pretty well because I could have not been here at all. And I could have lost you know functioning and all sorts of things. So really, um, luckily for me, because of what I do, I am able to you know when I'm done crying, get back into the place of gratitude gratitude that um, for what I do have that's good instead of focusing on what I don't have. So there's my little plug for everyone that when bad things happen, that we can choose our perspective. Absolutely. And look, the reason why I I brought that up, Desiree, is because, again, I'm I'm going through a bit of a head cold. I had jet lag last week. Um, And, you know, these little things, and mine's only basic compared to brain surgery, you know, (laughs) These little things are are hiccups along the way that allow us to reset and and have another look at our lives and what we're doing and how we're we're performing, really. Mm -hmm. Um, Change things up, maybe. And also even to, like, having a cold or being sick or, or surgery or whatever it is, we often, it gives us the opportunity to look at how well we're taking care of ourselves and what we you know, allowing ourselves to have downtime, to be okay with taking a break, 
you know, um, instead of uh, what I found when I came out of the hospital in particular was um, after a few weeks of recovery and such, and I, not just me, but other people were expecting me to be normal. <laughs> I wasn't normal in the first place, but to, you know, be back to normal. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And, and um, uh, part of that is I mentioned my dad died. I'm, I'm the trustee. And I'm like, what? Um, you know, my first time I got dressed and went anywhere was to go to his funeral. Um, and, and then all this stuff, that on top of normal stuff. And I was overwhelmed. And um, mm -hmm. and I had to get to the point where actually I read an article that talked about after an event like mine, don't try to multitask. It's not going to work. And I went, oh, that is normal for, for what's going on. And I gave myself permission to cut back on my schedule, to not say yes to everybody, to, you know, shorten my hours with clients and it feels so much better. So like you coming back, you know, mm. it give, give yourself permission to just not do it. Right. Just to say, yeah. no, <laughs> yeah, I you, well, you had four weeks in the hospital. I mm. just had four weeks um, in the UK with my father, and um, it was the same. Like I, everything was, I, I was, I prepped to go, so I yeah. had everything running smoothly. Um, whereas you didn't have that opportunity. But coming back with the with jet lag, you know, it was the same sort of thing. I could not think. I could not mm. couldn't multitask. And this week where I, when I've, I've had a head cold, so it's gone from one week to the next and it's almost like saying, well, you've got to stop. You're doing too much yeah. and you've got to give yourself that, that space, that break. So, yeah, I, I'm totally with you. I'm glad I did it on a holiday and not had to go through brain surgery, though. Yeah, I'm glad for you too. <laughs> I don't recommend it as a way to, and, and, you know, both of you, both you and I, we talk to people about intuition and about honoring our inner self. And, yeah. and I think along this way, the universe or God or whatever it is, will sometimes, you know, throw nails in the track of your tires to say, slow down or yeah. like take, take, pull over what's going on and what do you need to do? to you know take care of yourself and, and be at your optimum and, and really be following your heart because we don't want to waste our time following uh, everybody else's desires instead absolutely. of what's important to me am i doing what's really important to me yes absolutely yeah i totally agree um okay so we've got into that um, now, if you have any hiccups along the way, that's fine because of what you've gone through. I have no no yeah. problem with that. But what I actually want to ask you about, a bit more into your business side now, you are, I, I've got to read this out because it's not, doesn't come easily off my tongue, <laughs> Master Clinical Transpersonal Hypnotherapist. What on earth is that? Right. Um, well, so... Everyone's familiar with hypnosis, or not everyone. Most, some people think it's okay. I have to throw in a little funny story here. Once I, I um, donated a hypnosis certificate for a fundraiser, and the thank you note I got from the organization was, "Thank you for donating the hip um, hydrotherapy session." And I went, "No, no, 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 no. We're not. I am not doing that for anybody. Thank you." But. <laughs> So not everybody understands or even note recognizes the word hypnosis, apparently. Um, but most people have heard about hypnosis or are familiar. So I'm a hypnotherapist, which means primarily I use hypnosis in a therapeutic way. So helping people overcome obstacles. Clinical hypnotherapy is um, primarily focused on um, thoughts and body. Uh, say, stop smoking, stop biting your nails, uh, motivation, um, you know, the things that people associate it with. However, transpersonal means that it's more holistic mind, body, and spirit. So I have, and this leads into some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, in my training, we also focus on those things beyond, beyond our brain and body, and we can focus on uh, spirituality, the spiritual world, um, intuition. Uh, mm -hmm. And so a transpersonal, uh, my transpersonal training as a clinical hypnotherapist expands 
uh, my work and what I can do for people. So you, you still do the same um, concept of uh, you, you, you take somebody into like a, a trance or meditation, you know, into a trance and, and go into to it a bit deeper. But you start to look at things or you take them back into other areas rather than what's happening in the here and now. Yeah, and, and that's just part, like, so, you know, just like a, a cookbook, you know, we might have a simple recipe, we might have a more complicated recipe. So I actually, as a you know uh, practitioner, I do it all. Um, I've just had two stop smoking clients in the last couple of days and uh, somebody else, you know, overeating, you know, so I do a lot of the clinical, typical stuff. Um, but also, I have people come for uh, past life regression, or you mentioned life between lives, uh, spiritual regression, which I can describe to you further. Um, and and also, even within, or, or trauma, I, I do a lot of work with people with past trauma that it's still affecting them in their life um, as an adult. And so in those areas, I bring in the, the, the spiritual side. So I do ask someone, what's your spiritual belief? What, you, what would, word would you use? Do you believe you have guides? Or, you know, and I find what they are comfortable using and I can call in that sort of energy around them where we can ask their guides to offer them any help or suggest that, the, you know, the universe, it, you know, has a plan for them and, and or bring in intention setting. Um, anyway, and, and tie into the spirituality uh, part. And it's really therapeutic. It really is. Yeah, I can I can see that too. And the best part about that is the fact that you are asking them what their terminology is, because we all have that different terminology. Mm -hmm. And when we're using ones that suit us, it resonates better and we can we can we can absorb it better and get that understanding. So I really, really like that idea. Okay, so you you're you're doing this. Well, uh, no, I know what I was going to ask. Why? Why would people come for a transpersonal um, master clinical transpersonal hypnotherapist session? <laughs> um, all the things I already mentioned, because like I said, they might find me to stop biting nails, but in particular, they might find me um, based on the transpersonal part. Um, and the master part simply means that I've been through it even higher certifications than the triple the typical uh, clinical hypnotherapist. But um, so people do find me. Um, and it, I'm just going to again throw in here. Here's something interesting too. Because of the transpersonal part, because of the life between lives or the spirituality, or I also do psychic and mediumship readings and, and uh, use some tarot as well. I didn't list a lot of that stuff on my website for quite a long time because I wanted to be taken seriously, okay? And because people, as you've probably found out, you know, and just speaking on intuition, people have for quite a long time dismissed it. And uh, yeah, you know, if it's not, if I can't see it and I can't pick it up and put it in a box, then, uh, then it's not real. But I finally decided to trust myself, go with my heart and be authentic. <laughs> and I said, you know what, I'm going to put what I do and really what's my passion uh, in my work on my website. And, P and it's actually expanded my practice and my business because people find me and say, I've been looking for someone who does this. And I'm like, oh, who knew, right? That, mm -hmm. you know, like what they say, if you build it, they will come. Or if you're authentic, you draw the right you know, uh, people to you. And so, yes, people will come to me because they're looking for someone to do a past life regression. Maybe they've read about it or seen movies or heard about it, or they might know quite a, a bit about it. Or um, the life between lives is something that most people haven't read about, heard about. Um, but they might, you know, be wondering, what's why am I here? What What's my life purpose? You know, um, some people have, um, you know, talked about soul contracts, or uh, soul families, and, and that life between lives can answer a lot of questions in that area. Uh, that uh, what was your plan? <laughs> what was your soul's plan? And like, what were you thinking? Like, really, why are you with this person? Or why have you suffered these things? Um, and so in the life between lives, it's quite a very deep, extensive, um, interesting, uh, and 
honestly enlightening um, experience that takes the, the person into that spirit world. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the two. This is what I'm getting. We've got tran. Uh, we've got the um, past life regression where we actually you can actually take people back and see what their other lives were like, mm -hmm. and then you have the in between the lives. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when you're doing it, are you taking them? Are you doing both, or are you doing one or the other? One or the other. So uh, a past life regression, um, the process pretty much is we go through the hypnotic process and then kind of flow back through the current life and then kind of stop like before they're born. But then say now you're on a timeline or a hall of you know doors or whatever process I might use and go back to. And if they have a goal for that, if it's, you know, if it's just to find out out of curiosity, I wonder what I did was, you know, what was a past life experience I had, you know, go back to the past life experience that, you know, is of most interest or has the most answers for you in this lifetime. I usually do try to help it be therapeutic. So bring back messages or information from a past life that can help you in this lifetime. Um, or sometimes they want to know, you know, was, did I share a past life with my current husband? or that sort of thing and, and go back to the past life where you shared a lifetime together before. Um, so it, th that's the process there. And I take them back on a timeline. And when you're there, you know, and I count back and they land. <laughs> and yeah. um, then I start to ask questions about what's going on, et cetera, so forth. Life between lives is it, life between the past life regression takes about an hour and a half, two hours for the actual process. Uh, the life, between lives is about three to five hours. And it's a very long, deep, uh, progressive relaxation with some breathing techniques. And to really get deep, go back through the current life um, and back into the past, most recent past life, and then into the death before this life. So it's like making a U-turn <laughs> and take them through that. So they get a little bit of this most recent past life experience uh, but we don't focus on that. We bring them through that to their death before this birth. And there's that space that like, you know, where, you know, where do you go between lifetimes or, and they experience the whole kind of, for most people, it's even if they've never heard of it before, have a very similar experience of sort of like the tunnel of light or moving fast um, and going into these different stages and experiences of meeting their soul family. They may appear as the physical bodies, often they appear only energetically as, as sort of like orbs of light, um, which is my experience. Um, and then it goes through the process of uh, being able to move through there and ask questions of what's often termed the council um, about, um, you know, any, any questions they might have about like, what am I supposed to be doing? What did I learn? What do I need to overcome? Um, I had a client go through this and they were, you know, it's a beautiful experience. You're like, whoa, I'm, I'm just, I'm energy. I'm, I'm light. And it's, it's amazing. And at the end, he says, he says to them, and they're taught, we're talking, they're half awake, half asleep, being able to describe almost like be able to be in the dream while describing the dream practically kind of, that's a good explain, you know, good way of explaining it. And he says, I don't want to go back. Do I have to go back? Do I have to come back again? Meaning after this lifetime, does he have to come back again? And they're like, yes, you're nowhere near done. <laughs> and as the idea that the soul progresses with every lifetime, like that you've got work to do, you're <laughs> get back in there. I, you yeah. know, it's, it's just fascinating the messages people get and the answers they come back with. Absolutely. Um, and before we go any further, too, if you want to connect with um, Desiree, her website is transhypnotherapy.com. So www.transhypnotherapy.com. Um, you'll be able to get all the information on there. Um, okay, so I, I, I really enjoy where you're going. I have done a past life regression uh, oh, myself. Cool. Um, and where I was probably quite intrigued in is that there's a lot of people that talk about, well, in, in circles that I hang around in, they talk about past life yes. and talk yeah. about yeah, all good circles. Yeah. Um, they talk about that sort of thing. Um, I guess when I first heard it, and I was, I was only in my 20s when I first heard it, 
it was like I, I understand people wanting to know about past lives, but how does it actually help me in the here and now? And that was my biggest question because for me, going back and finding out what was going on, you know, umpteen different years, life, lifetimes ago, <clears throat> excuse me, is that relevant for the here and now? And I think that's what I'd like to get a little bit clearer understanding. I, I know my answer, but I wonder what um, the listeners, uh, if their thoughts were like that too. So what is one of the, probably the, the main areas why people want to go back? I know you said curiosity, which was probably my main area, mm -hmm. but there is a lot more to it, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. And, and like I said, I'm a um, hypnotherapist. So I use hypnosis and all the processes. Generally, I, even if the person just has curiosity, I always throw in something that has the potential therapeutic value to them. So uh, when we end a past life regression, uh, often a question will be, how is this, this life you just went through? in the past life, how is that the same or different from your current life? Um, and that might answer or review, am I repeating patterns? Am I finding, like, say if someone was in a, in a, murdered in a past life by their you know, partner or something, how does that reflect in a relationship that might be in this lifetime? Are there repeated patterns? And that's one of the big ones is because our soul our spirit kind of learns and and this is what I believe and what most of my resources, uh, you know, say as well. Uh, and it does make sense is that just like we grow up from being two years old to, you know, being 80, if you fall down and skin your knee, how many more times are you going to fall down and skin your knee? Like there's that metaphor about if there's a pot in the, you know, a, pothole on the road or you're walking and there's a hole in the road and you fall into it how many more times are you going to fall into the same you know hole in the road until you learn to walk around it so our souls can have the same experience and sometimes we you know uh, may lifetime after lifetime repeat bad patterns that if we go into a past lifetime and recognize oh wait that's the same sort of thing that's happening now break the pattern break the negative pattern, right? The dysfunctional pattern. And it gives this information that I can change that. Um, the other thing is when I talk about spirituality, we will ask for, say, their guides to come forward with a message at the end in case they didn't come with their, you know, unless it, if their you know, wheels didn't pick up what they need to learn, ask the guides, what do you need to know? And is there a symbol, a message, or a word for you to look for as you go forward for synchronicity? And that might be, you know, that there might even just be like a you know, picture of a cupcake. You know, the guide might say, here's and they're like a cupcake, whatever. But the next time the person happens to be in a cupcake shop or sees a cupcake, pay attention to what's going on and look around you. Who are you with? What's happening? And why is there this synchronicity? And it just opens up again, the intuition to pay yeah. attention and be aware and to just be more open to information coming in. I don't know if that answered you completely, but... It, yes, it does. It does because, again, you know, if we, we're going back into these past life regressions, we need to be able to actually have a, a reason to take it forward. Yes, curiosity is, is fantastic, but would you actually have that therapeutic side to it where it's actually helping us going mm -hmm. forward, then to me that's a win-win, you know, and when you get win-win, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> it, it, it is. And, um, you know, for example, on a couple... I've you know, done it a few times, not enough times. I'd love to do it many more. But one of the times I ask, sometimes of this curiosity or do I have a past life connection with the sort of work I lean toward, right? And um, and I ask to go back to um, a, a time when I had, had oh, what's the right word? The first time, I, I asked for the first time that I did any sort of this, like, I want to say metaphysical, or, or I, the first time I had some sort of connection with this sort of thing. And, and I found myself like on the top of a mountainside with others. And I know this sounds cliche, but we're like wearing these white <laughs> shift like things. And we 
take care of and manage the people in the town down below. We don't interact. But I was in charge of basically the time wheel, like this big stone wheel. And that was my job. I turned the wheel. And um, in the questioning, it's like, um, well, who, you know, basically my mother did it before me and my daughter will do it after me. And this is how it was. It was, and I don't, I, I'm still not sure about the, the message, but it was just this um, almost like a stoic community of, and it was before time. It was before time as we understand it now. It was before this yes. era, before the flood or whatever. It was that like interest. So I, it's just interesting that um, to kind of reflect on that. And then even to say, well, hmm, you know, am I managing other people's lives? Am I, what am I doing to help? others maybe even move their lives forward right so i kind of see that metaphor maybe that um mm. you know turning the wheel for people yeah yeah and sometimes to go forward we need to go back as well yeah into a past life regression <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um so i would love to just bring my little experience forward yeah. because i think i think you will enjoy this right um so i first did a past life regression and i did it I, I did a DYI, I do it yourself. I was okay. so I did it myself as a, and I had a guided meditation on the recording or whatever it was. Did it myself, and it was not good. I do not recommend do it yourself to anyone. So it worked. I mean, I went back, but because it's, it was recorded, you had to come back from the past life in their time frame. Right. Whereas when you do it with a professional, they're watching you, you're, you're getting the answers, you're communicating, you're interacting, you know when, as a professional, to bring that person back. Mm -hmm. As a recording, it doesn't do that. So I've got to this particular stage in my past life regression, and it was at that stage where I really needed, it created more drama, if that makes sense. Mm. So there was a lot of guilt, there was a lot of um, questions, there was a lot of, I basically come to this door and I had to decide whether I was going to go through it um, and go back into, uh, it was a monastery, um, hmm. open this door, go back into to this monastery um, and accept what was going on inside or I had to walk away from what my whole life was all about in this monastery. And so I've come to, it's like that crucial part of the movie and I had to come back. And it's it like, was, now we're counting you back. One, two, three. Open your eyes. You're like, no, no, wait a minute. No, no, no don't take me back yet. I need to know what I did. So so it was, it, and then, of course, I had this guilt playing on my mind because there was things happening in this monastery that should not have been happening in, in my morals, um, especially to young children. And, you know, it, it was really, it was really affecting me. So I actually went to a proper hypnotherapist and we did the past life regression and we, we went through it. And I didn't go back into the door. I, I refused to go back in and, and created my own life and did my own um, teachings and trainings and whatever away from the monastery. But it's really funny now that you say what you've just said because I have this real deep dislike for organized religion uh-huh i don't I, religion's fine organized religion i have this real and i i shouldn't say it's a dislike it's a real not not trusting i thought and i feel that it's come back from that era from that time at that monastery when the the facade of it was that we're these type mm -hmm. of people but deep down, we're taking care of you, little girl. <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, don't make me. And yeah. I was, I was, a man, I was a man. I was a, a male monk, um, mm -hmm. it, and it was that, in that era where you know had all the, the brown outfit, and, and I, I sort of think of um, like a Robin Hood era yeah. in that sort of uh -huh. era. Well, the, the Franciscans have yes, that. That's it. Yeah. Um, did we ever talk about this before? Did we talk about this at all? I because I don't remember saying, well, I don't think we did because, um, however, what's really interesting is your story is very similar to someone else, um, not someone I did, but who was talking about a past life. And, um, and they, it, but they had to, it was during the war and they were a female nun 
who had to leave and then go to another monastery, like someplace else during to live out the this whatever the war was. It, it was an early war, you know. Um, and but then they left the monastery and they started their own own school or something. And I'm like, huh, I wonder if you guys ran into each other in that past life. <laughs> you, you both had a similar experience. They, they lost faith uh, because of what was happening. They left the monastery and started, um, you know, something after that war had passed their country. And I think they had started out in Germany of all places and then gone, gone to like, I want to say Spain and, and then returned. All right. So, yeah. And I'm just like, this is ringing a bell, but I, I don't think it was you. No, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that one because I, I didn't go, yeah, I didn't travel that far. I stayed, I remember the monastery was up high and the, the town was down below like the hill. And so I went into there, but I didn't actually start anything, any organised. It was just more of a gathering and allowing people to connect and, and have different views and yeah, it was, it was, you know, but, but she took me all to my deathbed there and um, I was just it, quite in, in bliss. So I was on my deathbed, but I was really happy mm -hmm. and really, yeah, it was, it was, it was a really lovely experience. It was really nice, but it wasn't until you said that before about um, how we can bring those things forward. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have got this deep um, distrust for organised religion. Yeah, it's a fascinating experience. And I'm glad you got that resolved instead of just always wondering, right? And yeah. um, and, and it's true that, you know, just like things, you know, being a hypnotherapist, I'm always thinking of the subconscious mind and, and you know, people say something's at the back of my mind or I just have this feeling, right, um, and that there's something and we don't know where it came from. Well, sometimes where it came from, where there might be something lurking, could be from a past life. It could be from something that we couldn't even go back in this lifetime and, and put our fingers on, uh, that there wouldn't be any reason. Um, so I just, it, it's just interesting. And it's, I think it's a valuable tool. And uh, anyone listening to this show is probably open to that idea. A lot of people, like I said before, would just say, well, that's crazy. And I'll be like, yeah, in a good way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, that was the past life regression. Now, when you were talking about the life, life between lives, yeah. um, you mentioned a few things there that really resonated with me too because I've had um, a near-death experience mm -hmm. and I feel that what you were saying about the, the tunnel, the light tunnel and things like that, it resonates very well with what they class as a near-death experience too because there was a lot of stuff I saw like that yeah um so can we talk a little bit more about that world in between worlds and, and like i said different people have a, a different experience of it um and so you know i've heard some people speak but um, similar experience to what i had if anyone's interested um michael newton uh, is an author and a hypnotherapist uh, and he wrote two books journey of souls and uh, Journey of Souls, and well, if you find Journey of Souls, you'll find the other one, something else of souls. But he kind of stumbled upon this with clients, and then he he decided to to actually do it on purpose, study it on purpose, and and came up with a um, with actually along with the the man who was my trainer in hypnosis that they worked together and came up with the actual process to take someone to this space on purpose. And so it was mm -hmm. Alan Chips was the, um, the man who trained me and he's since passed and he and Michael Newton. So that's where the life between lives hypnosis sp uh, sprung from. And so my experience was you go through this and you're guided. And so I'll fast forward you know, what I saw, there was like darkness. And then, you know, the facilitator, the hypnotist is like, okay, move this way, move that way. Like, if you're not seeing anything, we get help. <laughs> and um, eventually I, you know, kind of went through some lights and then I came into this sort of a, I want to call it a room, but it was sort of like a cave-like feel to it. And, um, and it, I had, I did the process not too long after my mom had passed in 2019 but I, I came into this space 
and um, and and there were just all these beams of I want to call them beams, you know, lights like orbs of light gathered, and and I recognized them energetically. I want to say, and mm -hmm. uh, and then as I'm kind of in this space full of all these orbs of light, I thought, wait a minute. All of these are people that are alive. This is not making sense to me. <laughs> and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. These people are all alive. And then we moved forward and I had a, like a larger white orb beside me that was sort of like helping me along. And, and the literature says, oh, that's your guide. I'm like, okay. Um, so we moved forward, this orb of light and I. Um, and then the next room, were again more orbs of light but of those who had passed on so i just thought that was interesting like oh a room for the living and a room for the dead and and then i you know i recognized my mother by energetically i didn't see her face or her body she was kind of uh, gold and, and orange <laughs> and you know my godfather was green orb back there and so it was just a, a fascinating sense to recognize uh, you know, decide, oh, that orb is my mother. I see it. And I felt it as my mother and, and her light even came yeah. forward and, and sort of like enveloped me. Um, and, and it was very emotional. It's like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, um, going forward. So, and, and I looked down and I'm, I'm like, well, the, the facilitator, the hypnotist says, well, look down. What do you see? You know, what do you look like? And I'm like, oh, I'm blue. You know, I'm a blue orb of light. I'm like this blue plasma like so different people will actually see physical beings represented in physical body um, more like they, you know, you might expect to see them. Others will see the energetic beings. Um, and I started answering and forgot what the rest of your question was. <laughs> that was that was just lovely. That's that that was was thing since they cut a hole in my head. But go on. <laughs> no, that was perfect. That's what I wanted to know because, um, you know, again, what's the reason for doing that? What's the reason for going in between? And, and yes, curiosity is is part of it and it's a strong part of it. But I feel that one, when you've done something like that, it makes you more grounded and more alive and more accepting and more, mm -hmm. a, a, I don't know, for want of another word, a better person in the here and now. Well, you know, it, it certainly has helped me personally um, understand or, you know, believe that this is not all there is. Uh, it gives a sense of permanence that we don't go away. We don't disappear. Oh, and I, I need to add here. So um, one of the things that happened during that summer, this was 2019, I... Um, I said my mom had died in 29 in the summer in July, and um, she appeared to me in what looked like her physical form, but I knew she wasn't really standing there. Um, right as I was waking, and I was still in that hypnogogic, half awake, half asleep state, and she appeared to me, and and they I won't it could get so long if I go into what she wanted. She wanted to tell me where she wanted to be buried, which was a mausoleum. So she kind of showed me in my mind's eye, and and. Um, and I didn't understand it until two days later when we were at the cemetery and I said, oh, that's what that meant. And that's what the stones were. You know, the guy says, and here's our new mausoleum. And I, and I told my dad and my sister and that we all went, that's where she wants. Okay. Um, I started talking again, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but so the idea of, of being, um, energy and all this. So, uh, and then about two or three months later, I, I'm like, well, I'd been dreaming of her a lot and, and feeling in touch with her still. And my dad had had no dreams and all that. And he felt he was missing her so badly. And he said, um, so I, I thought, well, she came once before. I'm going to ask her if she has a message I can give to my dad. And um, so once again, as I was just waking on purpose, I asked her, I said, mom, can you can you come and give me any messages for dad? Which she did. And that's a whole nother story. And if anybody wants to hear it, it's uh, Ghosts in the Spirit World on my YouTube channel, right? <laughs> Intuitive Journey with Desiree. But I described the whole thing there. And it's perfect for uh, Halloween. But um, 
so she she told me where to find a letter for him and what it looked like and that it had been but but it turns out it had been written many years before but I felt like I was really had this great connection with her like she wasn't just dropping in and, and drifting off um, and I didn't see her this time I did not see her it was more like a psychic conversation and I said well since I've got you what's it like there and she says, oh, it's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. I'm beautiful. And and I asked who else was there. I think my sister's also passed away. And, you know, and I, I asked my godparents. She goes, yes, Anne and, you know, they're here. Your sister, yes, your sister's here. And she even mentioned a dog that she had even before I was born. And I'm like, okay. And then she says, you're here too. You just don't know it. And that woke me up. I was like, okay, I'm up. Like, <laughs> I'm here, you know, pinching myself. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. And I'm thought, that's weird. Like, what does she mean by that? Then in preparation for um, doing a, a talk on the spirit world for a, a group I belong to, I was reading some old literature and I'm looking through an old book um, written about a hundred years ago. And in this book, the person's discussing the spirit world. And he says, not all of the spirit comes is in your physical body. So when your your soul, you know that part of your spiritual self always stays in that spiritual yes. realm, and yes. and it's what my and I that made sense. I'm like, oh, my mother says I'm there too, and he even went on to say that those who die, when they are up there, they have everyone there everyone's there that they want to be there you know and they don't want to see them they you're not here um so that would explain that i was there too and i just didn't know it because my mother was experiencing being surrounded by everyone that she loves whereas down here we're only separated because we're in this we got this heavy duty i wouldn't even call it a veil it's like an iron wall you know oh, a lead curtain between us and that spiritual world unless we work on it um mm. we're, you know go, getting through it then I always like to say, if you get three points of agreement, then you've got, you know, the truth. Then when I, it was later in November that I was taking the course for Life Between Lives and with uh, Michael Newton's uh, investigation and work with these people that he took into this state of hypnosis, they all said the same thing, that only a percentage of our energy comes down into this physical body, that uh, percentage is always left behind up there. So if you think about it, instead of thinking one piece, two pieces, three pieces, if you consider it as a ongoing stream that we're always here, we're always here, we're always here, we're always here, but where we can uh, allow ourselves to send our focus to, just like if you pinch yourself, you focus on where you just pinched, but the rest of your body's still there right? It doesn't mean the rest of your body disappeared. So where we can focus on and during meditation, hypnosis, that sort of thing, we can focus into that spiritual part of ourselves and that frequency. It's like changing the dial on a radio, that all of the frequencies are there, but we are all of those frequencies. We can just dial one way or the other with practice. So yeah, that, that kind of is part of this thing is that, yes, we are always these orbs of light. But for the most part, we are interacting through this part of us. Yeah. And I think that's what the people sort of want to see that visual. And even when you say an orb of light, you think, well, that's that's that that's that big or this big or whatever big it is. But the reality is it's it's not even an orb of light. That's how we are visualizing uh -huh. it, and that's how we're seeing it. Um, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. We, mm -hmm. we we're completely connected. It's where we want to tune in, like you yes. say, to where we are, um, yeah. and what's what's relevant at the particular time. So, I love how you explain that. But Desiree, we are starting to run out of time. So um, now, like I said, people can connect with you on your transhypnotherapy transhypnotherapy.com. Mm -hmm. on your website um, and obviously we'll have all the details down below um, can you do this sort of work like I'm in Australia you're in America can you do this sort of work um, like that can you, or do you have to be there in person um, well be, I'll tell you what before um, COVID I probably would have said oh, I don't know but because of that 
it's really expanded the the possibilities um, of doing this. So yes, I do have um, I do hypnosis uh, and past life regression um, on Zoom, and I've had no issues, and it's been just as effective. It's just just been being like in the room. Um, I have not yet had a client um, do life between lives um, on Zoom, and so I'm open to it. I just haven't done it because I, I mean it's expensive and it's and it's long. So I have yes. not um, explored doing that. I you know because it's like quite a it's quite a stretch of time, and um, and so I whereas the life between I mean the past life regression has been just uh, fine and very fascinating. Mm -hmm. and, and it's um, you know when we talk about there's no real no such thing as space and time. This uh, you know, has worked quite well um, yeah. doing, doing the hypnosis over Zoom or even messenger video or, you know, that sort of thing. It's worked well. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And, and like you say, because there is no space and time, I think that COVID has allowed us to step up a little bit in our, in our way of thinking and allow us to do that because, yeah. I mean, so many times you hear about um healings that that are happening you know where you can send healings and, and oh yeah that's that's a little bit of rubbish but it isn't and i know it isn't i know it because I've, I've done it myself but i think COVID has allowed us to expand our minds or other people to expand their minds and say yeah we can still do that we don't have to be in the same room so that's really cool so connect with desiree on that side of it any last little tidbits because we are actually running out of time I was going to say, just to uh, verify what you were just saying, I even do, I do Reiki also, and I've done distance Reiki, and I've even surprised myself when I'm like, okay, you know, I feel something here, I feel something there, and after the session, I go over it with them, I'm like, hey, there's something going on with your knee is there, and they're like, yeah, I just twisted it, you know, I'm like, huh, who knew, right, <laughs> added it, like, yeah. they're miles away, but I, I, I'm having their you know, energy in front of me feeling, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. It, it, it can be done and it's, and it's done really well too. Um, I guess like anything though, Desiree, we, you get the shonkies that are a little bit, I don't know if you know that word, but you get those ones that are a little bit, you know, they tend to take the money and run type thing. Oh, but, yeah. um, and that is one thing I always say, and I probably say this because I have done the work. I've gone through the certifications. I've, you know, uh, mm -hmm. So I say always check somebody out. Um, I'd like to have a conversation with the person beforehand. I don't just say schedule and pay and then we'll see about you. Um, yeah. So I, I recommend that people should, you know, really check out who they're working with. because We're going into your mind, you know. Um, you don't, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's sort of like you turn it on the recording and then like, okay, time's up. <laughs> No. Yeah. So you you really want to trust your hypnotherapist? It makes it that much easier for both of us as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It was it was so exciting. I love how you you've talked about the different um, areas and how it just it clarifies it. It makes it easier to understand. Yeah, for sure. Good, good. And thank you. It's I'm delighted to be here talking to you. Finally. Well, <laughs> Don't go away because I'm going to talk to you when we finish here. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, you've just got to you've got to jump on their website and have a look because it's it's amazing. It's it really is. Uh, like I said, I have done past life regression and I love it. It was it was really good. It was just curiosity, um, but it was really good. I, I think I'd like to do it again now and ha knowing what you'll know already have a look at it a little bit differently so do it professionally don't do a DIY like I do don't do it yourself um do it professionally and and then you know that you're getting um you're being looked after you're being nurtured while you're experiencing this because what I was experiencing was pretty it was pretty traumatic um and you needed to have somebody professional there to help you through it um to get the most out of it too so um, subscribe, like, share the podcast. Thank you for being a guest on the show and um, I will see you all next week. Okay, bye for now. <laughs>